Welcome back to another lesson. And in this lesson today, we're going to be talking about units and dimensions and all these things. And units, dimensions are very important because this can be the deciding factor as to whether you hit the moon if you are aiming for it or whether you shoot way past it or whether you don't even reach it or things like that. And it can make matters that are meant to be very small, very big or vice versa and things like that. So you should drill into your head. Units are very important. And one of the first things that you need to know is that there are generally two um, systems that we're going to be dealing with. And one is the USCS or the US customary system, also known as the English system. And this gets a little bit confusing because it's nothing, not that nothing, but it's, it's got very little to do with like England, for example, but this is more so focused in the United States. And that's what the US stands for in USCS, United States customary system, I believe. Now there's another system you need to take into account. And this is going to be the one that's much more widely used. And this is the metric SI or the metric uh, system, system international d'unité or something like that, right? The, the international system of units. And I think originally that name comes from French. And this is, as I said, more widely used. It's used um, in most of the world. Um, so that's what you need to know. So most of the time you see me talking in this course, we're probably going to be talking about the metric system. Now, the U.S. customary system has its range of um, units and values and things like that. And so does the metric SI. And the metric SI, I think, is a little bit more intuitive, right? So water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. It boils at 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit rather than 32 degrees. I mean, sorry, 100 degrees Celsius rather than 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212 uh, degrees Fahrenheit for uh, freezing and boiling, if that makes sense. Um, you have things like Miller, Killer, um, uh, micro, nano, right? And these things are kind of, they become intuitive. One kilometer is a thousand meters. Uh, one meter is a hundred centimeters or a thousand millimeters. And it's, it's kind of intuitive, right? So I think the metric system is a little bit easier to work with when we're dealing with calculations and it gives us a good gauge of what we're dealing with. I think now on the other hand, like a foot equals 12 inches or a yard equals three feet or a mile equals uh, uh 5,280 feet or something like that. But you, you get the point. It's, it's, it's hard for me to remember, right? I can't even remember these things at the drop of a dime. So, um, yeah, we're going to be talking about the metric system most of the time. Now there are two types of units that we can discuss, right? Primary or fundamental, um, dimensions, I should say, or secondary or derived dimensions. And, you know, primary dimensions are things like length, uh, time, temperature, things like that. And the derived dimensions are things that we use the primary dimensions to get or we can use. And I guess technically there are an unlimited number of these, but we have um, in the metric system, at least, I think about 22 um, that we deal with on a, on a frequent basis. So I'll give an example of a derived unit. This could be something like we know that speed is equal to length over time, right? So speed equals distance over time. And that's how I can get that if you get what I'm saying. So that's an example of, of using primary and, uh, derived units, if that makes sense. And as I mentioned before, you want to have a scale of the things that you're dealing with, right? So I know that a kilometer is pretty big. I can't walk a kilometer in two seconds. I know that a meter has a certain amount of length, right? Or a foot or a mile, right? I should have a gauge for these things. I should know that the scale of something that's micro is much bigger or is bigger than the scale of something that's nano, right? Nano gets really small, whereas micro is small, but it's on a different scale of nano. You get what I'm saying? Just as, as you have uh, kilobytes, gigabytes, terabytes, things like this. So this should give you a kind of gauge. Um, of when you're dealing with these things. These words, these prefixes kind of have meaning attached to them. Now, let's take an example of using mass and weight because we use these things interchangeably a lot of the time. You know, people might be referring to their mass and they might use the word weight. But the reality is, is that if I'm here, my mass is the same as if I'm on Pluto or if I'm on Neptune or if I'm at the top of a mountain, whereas my weight would be different in all of those situations. And you have to understand that weight is a force right? So using Newton's second law, we can understand that force is equal to mass times acceleration and weight is a force. So if I substitute weight um, for force in this situation, my equation becomes mg. That g is the acceleration due to gravity. And typically we value this in the metric system at about 9.087, right? And oftentimes this is rounded to 
meters per second squared, right? Units come into play again. And in terms of um, feet per second squared, it's 32.174 feet per second squared. And I think oftentimes you'll see that 32.2 or something, I'm not sure, right? But it's, it's feet per second squared, right? It's an acceleration. We're being pulled toward the earth at a certain acceleration. And this is where our weight comes into play. And you can do a little bit of an experiment. People might look at you weird if you do this, but maybe give it a try. Take a scale and go into an elevator and stand on the elevator before it starts moving. And you can see your weight change based on if you're going up or you're going down, because all that scale is doing is measuring the force on itself, right? So if I'm going up, that force now becomes a lot um, more. So I weigh more when I'm going up in an elevator. Whereas if I'm going down, that force is a little bit less. So I weigh less in an elevator. So that's a good gauge of, of mass versus um, weight. Now, how do we measure mass? Um, mass can be measured directly or indirectly. And the easier way to do it is to measure it indirectly. And this is, like I said, for example, if you know the weight of something and you know the acceleration due to gravity, you know your mass, right? But this acceleration due to gravity can change, right? Based on your reference to the earth, which is why on average, right? You take that 9.807 to be your acceleration due to gravity. But if I wanted to find the mass of something, I can measure it indirectly by using my weight and using my acceleration due to gravity. You can also measure mass directly. And um, I Googled it real quick. And what you can kind of do is I think you, if you have a balance, you reference a known mass. So I know how much this mass is, for example. I put that on a balance. I put the mass that I want to measure on the balance. And I see the level of, I don't know if distortion is the right word. It's either going to be less and, and, and go like this, or it's going to be more and go like this. And, and based on how much, um, I guess maybe displacement, I guess would be the term, there is, I can come up with the mass of that object. But this is a little bit cumbersome. It's a little bit unnecessary. It's doing too much in most situations. You don't have to do that in most situations. You're probably just going to want to measure it indirectly because that's easier to do. And it gives us a good enough um, value for what we want. Now let's talk about energy. Now, typically you're going to see energy expressed in things like kilojoules, right? Or maybe even joules, for example. But energy can also be expressed in calories, right? And I mean the calories in which, like, if you read, I have some uh, creme-filled wafers here. And you see that it says, I don't know if it's focusing, but it says 90 calories. That's how much energy I get if I eat the serving size, which is two wafers. So I'll gain 90 calories if I eat two wafers, for example. And what you have to understand is that our bodies are really heat engines, right? Where intaking energy to later use that energy, right? And um, we burn that energy. So, you know, you do a lot of exercise, you burn calories. And a calorie is the amount of energy that we need to raise one gram of water at 14.5 degrees Celsius by one degree Celsius. But this can also be expressed in terms of uh, BTUs or British thermal units, right? Which is in the US customary system. It gets kind of confusing because you hear US customary system, but then I'm saying the word British. But BTUs are um, USCS units, if that makes sense. And one BTU is essentially the amount of energy needed to raise one pound mass, right? Not pound force, one pound mass of water at 68 degrees Fahrenheit by one degree Fahrenheit. And you can convert these things to kilojoules. Now, power and energy kind of relate to one another. Power is energy expressed as a rate per time, right? So it's energy per time, right? Which can be expressed in things like watts or kilowatts or horsepower. Horsepower, horsepower, all this pull on, I got horsepower. I'm wearing Nike, but you get the point. But on a real note, right, when you hear somebody talking about horsepower in their car, right, they're talking about the amount of power that their energy, I mean, that their engine can draw, right? So if you have a really high horsepower car, like a thousand horsepower or something, it can draw a lot of energy and it can, or actually it can output, I should say, not draw. It's outputting that amount of energy, right? So that's what horsepower is. And this comes from, you know, we used to use horses to do work back in the, people still do, but for the most part, that's what they were using back in the day. And there was a scientist, I think Scottish scientist, I can't remember his name. He um, used this term to kind of define how much his steam engine was outputting, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, you also have things called kilowatt hours, right? And this gets a bit confusing, right? So, okay, so for example, right? So I have this lamp, right? And this lamp is rated at uh, max 35 watts. So that's the power rating of this lamp, right? But um, now what if I were to use this lamp for 3,600 seconds or whatever, right? Things can be expressed in terms of energy. So when we say wattage, that is an um, instantaneous thing. That is the amount of power that something is using 
per uh, unit time, right? But if you take that and multiply it by unit time, what do you get? You get um, energy. So when you have things like kilowatt hours, it's actually um, kilowatts times the time, if you get what I'm saying. And if I know that uh, power, right, is already energy per time, if I'm multiplying something by time, the time cancels out and I'm left with energy. And this is how you should be able to derive um, units and understanding. And, and if you forget, right, you can just derive it in the moment and come up with the explanation. So when you see something like kilowatt hours, it's a measure of energy, not a measure of power or, or time or whatever. So remember that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is dimensional homogeneity. And essentially, when you're doing equations, when you're doing calculations, you should be dealing with the same units, right? So when I multiply things out, I'm not adding seconds to uh, newtons and then coming out with, with that one unit, right? The units have to match up. And if, I, if my units don't match up, maybe I've done something wrong somewhere. So I can actually use this as a method to check myself. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so be sure to double check your units. And hopefully as you do more questions, as you come across more things, you gain a better understanding of when something feels off and you can stop yourself in the moment and potentially not waste too much time. And I think we're going to go ahead and stop there. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, as always, please go ahead and leave um, the questions in the comment section and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks.